Hi, welcome to First Step Azure Cloud Services. In this video, we are going to see how to create a delimited text dataset to read CSV data from Azure Blob Storage using Azure Data Factory. Before jumping into the tutorial, I would like to give an introduction to what is dataset in Azure Data Factory. A dataset is a name view of the data that serves as input or output for activities in data pipeline. Generally, dataset represents the structure of data to be processed and provides necessary information for the data factory to interact with various data sources and destinations. Datasets can be used as both source and sync in Azure Data Factory pipelines. As a source, a dataset specifies where the data originates from and as a sync, it specifies where the data should be written to. Datasets identify data within different data stores such as tables, files, folders, and documents. Datasets in Azure Data Factory typically includes the following information, or generally it, it requires the following information such as connection string, file format, schema, partitioning, or filtering. It's very, very important to know that we need to create a linked service before creating a data set. A linked service are much like connection strings, which defines the connection information needed for the service to connect to the external resources such as file systems, blob storage, database, and so on. You have to be very, very careful when you're creating a data set because data set name should start and end with a letter or a number, which means an alphanumeric character. Other than this, we will not allow any other characters in a dataset name. Same case, a dataset name should be only containing letters, numbers, and underscores. So these two cautions we need to be very, very keep in mind. Next, I would like to give an introduction to delimited text file. A delimited text is a type of file format used to store tabular data, such as spreadsheet data, in a plain text format. In a delimited text file, each line typically represents a single row of data and the values within each row are separated or delimited by a specific character such as comma, tab, semicolon, or pipeline. Most common types of delimited text files are comma-separated values, simply known as CSVs, where commas are used to separate the values and tab-separated values TSVs, where the tabs are used to separate the columns in values. Delimited text files are commonly used for exchanging data between different applications for importing, exporting data into and from databases or spreadsheet programs. Now let's jump back to what is a delimited data set in Data Factory. A delimited data set refers to a data set type that represents data stored in delimited text files such as CSV or TSV. Same as the introduction to delimited text. When you create a data set in Azure Data Factory to represent the data stored in delimited text files, you specify various properties including file path, file format, and then column headers, and finally data types. Once you have defined a delimited text data set, you can use it as a source or sync in your data pipelines. For example, you can use it to ingest data from delimited text files into Azure data stores, transforms the data using activities like mapping or filtering, and then load the transformed data into other destinations. Overall, delimited text data sets in Azure Data Factory Facilitate the integration and processing of data stored in delimited text file format within data pipelines. It is important to know that Azure Data Factory supports to read delimited text data from connectors such as Amazon S3, Azure Blob, Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 1 and Gen 2, Azure Files, File System, FTP, Google Cloud Storage, HDFS, HTTP, Oracle Cloud Storage, and finally SFTP. Sure. Now let's jump into the tutorial. So here, 
in order to create a data set first you need to log into your portal.azure.com then navigate to the resource group where the data factory is created click the data factory and hit the launch studio button this will basically launch the data factory studio into your browser once the data factory studio is launched as i mentioned you have to verify two things first whether you have a valid linked service created in our case in our previous videos we have created this much linked services and we are going to use the the account key linked service let me test that up it is basically working fine if you want to see the video how to create linked services please go to my youtube channel you can check in the linked service playlist the connection is successful now let's click cancel go to author expand the data set where you can see i have already created a separate folder for blob storage and we are going to do the data sets demo and we're going to work on the demo so let me create a new subfolder called demo okay so once this is created you can click these three dots new data set the moment you click new data set the first thing it will ask as i mentioned already it tries to connect with the linked service and the same window that you get when you try to create a link service that will appear here you have to navigate to azure in azure azure blob storage you have to click and then continue so the next step is the file format if you remember in the beginning of video i have told that there are certain information we need to use or pass that's nothing but connection string file format and schema and finally partitioning or filtering so the first step connection string we have defined that we are going to connect to the blob storage the second step is which file format for us it's delimited text or csv click continue so the name by default will come as delimited text one if you have multiple uh, delimited text data sets created it will have two three and so on so that's by default will provided by data factory we are going to rename this according to the standard naming convention that we follow so ds stands for data set underscore abs stands for azure blob storage and then we are going to perform read and write both the operations so rw and finally we are going to create this data set for delimited text so it's csv okay and again you need to give the connection string information as i mentioned i'm gonna use the account key connection string i have picked that and you see there are certain properties popping up i will explain these properties in, in the next few minutes now let's jump into the the next step hit ok here the moment you hit ok you see the data set is created in the same name you have given and you have the properties you can click this property section to hide that up now this is the section where we are going to create the data set now it has linked service we have given that you can test that connection here also it should pass the connection is success so basically what is linked service here this property this property specifies the name of the linked service that will be used to connect to the underlying storage medium next file path file path specifies the location where the file is stored for blob storage it accepts information like container directory and file name so basically you can click browse in my case i have created a container called data so the container name is data then i have the directory path as inbound csv data finally the file name dataset.csv if you hit ok you see data comes in the container because my container is data inbound and csv data comes in the directory path because these are blob storage path and this is my blob file so you can easily add them by clicking like this if you want to preview the data you can click preview data that will show the sample data from the connection if you feel that you are using a different file format you can choose detect file format this will basically help you to fetch the right file format here okay the next property once you have chosen this is 
compression type so basically compression type is nothing but compression codec used to, to read write text files generally the allowed values are bzip to gzip zip tar gzip tar snappy and lz4 if you drop down you can see the same format most of the cases we will not get or we will not use any of this format because the files will be processed and stored in the dedicated location so for our example here i'm going to leave this none okay so the default value is non compressed so if you are not selecting anything then it choose as non compressed it is not a mandatory parameter whereas if you see the linked service and file path is a mandatory parameter the fourth property is column delimiter generally column delimiter used to separate the columns in a file when the column delimiter is defined as a empty string which means no delimiter in such cases the whole line is considered as a single column you can consider using a rare unprintable character that may not exist in your data currently we support comma semicolon pipe tab and start up the heading delimiters by default comma is used as a column delimiter show sure. cool the fifth property is row delimiter row delimiter used to separate rows in a file for copy activity the single character or slash or slash n or slash r and slash n can be used for mapping data flow a single or two character can be used to separate rows in a file the current supported values are slash r comma slash n or slash r slash n same case slash n line feed slash r carriage return most of the cases it will come as slash r and slash n and it it could be either slash r comma slash n as well okay the next one is encoding when it comes to encoding the encoding type used to read write text files allowed values are from utf8 utf8 without bomb utf16 utf16b utf32 and that goes to iso885913 iso885915 and windows1254 windows1255 and so on but most of the cases utf8 cracks the problem very rare cases you will tend to change this encoding from utf8 to others and the default value for encoding is utf8 the next property is quote character quote character is a single character to quote column values if it contains column delimiter when a quote character is defined as empty string it means there is no quote character and column value is not quoted and escape character is used to escape the column delimiter itself by default the quoted character is double quotes it allows values like double quotes and single quotes or no quote character escape character a single character to escape quotes inside a quoted value when a escape character is defined as empty string the quote character must be set as empty string so it's a rule when you define a quote character as empty string you still have an option to disable your escape character but when you design a escape character as an empty string you must define your quote character as an empty string so that's inevitable and the default value for escape character is backslash so sure. the next property is first row as header first row as header is a checkbox that helps to define whether the first row of the data set is my column header or not 
you can enable this and most of the cases we have to enable this and finally we have the last property as null value which specifies the string representation of null value the default value is an empty string so these are the properties that we need to fill along with a delimited text data set in azure data factory so now we have loaded the data can i see the schema yes you can still see the schema until or unless it's a static reference data set so if you go to schema import schema import from connection store so this will basically pull all the column names and its data types so this is what a schema is and parameters this will allow you to create dynamic parameters and that will help you to read any files from any blob storage if you are trying to read a delimited text i have prepared a separate video for this and i have attached that in the description please go through that video if you want to create a dynamic data set so again if you like the video please hit the like button if you feel that you have learned something new today don't forget to subscribe to my channel thanks for watching the video